Then, Kaz4541 says he's feeling ill. Now, if there's anything else you want to say, we'd like to hear it. If not, you can obviously walk out the door you came in. Yo, what's good, homies? Another day, another classic TCAP reaction for you. And in this one, Chris Hansen uses his god-tier powers of manipulation and stress in order to make this creep literally pass out and dive headfirst into the furniture of this house that they're doing this sting at. So make sure you watch to the very end because, obviously, this one is quite insane. So if you want to see what made him pass out, make sure you watch until the very end of this one. And without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? Um, not now. He smelled like he was smoking in the car beforehand and hasn't showered in a couple of days. All right, so uh, we're starting things off. This dude's already in the house. Sadly, I could not find a clip where he's walking in, but that's not the most important part, all right? If anything, we're just speed running to the good stuff here, but I love how the decoy is starting things off by absolutely just trashing this man. Apparently, he smells of smoke and just body odor in general. Kind of shocking that you'd expect these guys to at least try to be somewhat presentable for what they think is, uh, you know, an exciting night for them. But it makes sense because the only people on this show are the types of DGENs that are just totally on the outside fringes of humanity and society and already probably struggle with hygiene so it doesn't shock me that this dude's over here just being smelly you didn't bring me any chocolate no you know why why because um <clears throat> I didn't want her to find it. Oh, jeez. We got a cool guy over here. Hey, cool guy alert. It's official. Something about the way this dude talks. You can tell he just thinks he is so suave and smooth with the ladies, which is obviously not true because you would not be here right now if you were smooth with the ladies. You'd be dating people your own age. Uh, and the her that he refers to of, you know, when he's asked why he didn't bring chocolates is his girlfriend. That's right. This dude's in a relationship and he's just so cool that he's like, I didn't want her to look. He see the receipt for, you know, getting chocolate at the gas station because she knows I don't matter with candy like that so she'd obviously know i was not being faithful <laughs> like all right dude calm down how much you want to bet to this imaginary girlfriend of his is even fake just to add to the mystique of this guy and make it seem like he's wanted by other women because clearly again you are not wanted by anybody if you find yourself in the depths of this evil like these guys are talking to these people in chat rooms that you know you should not be talking to nobody who has a successful dating life is out here doing this crap i would have no. thrown it away no so explain again why no chocolates just didn't bring it. Uh -huh. So what's your plan here? <laughs> so we got the reveal underway already. Chris is wondering why he didn't get any, uh, you know, extra chocolates because I always like to joke that whatever snacks these guys bring, the crew gets to share after they get arrested. So that would be disappointing, you know? You're hoping for, a, I don't know, a little Snickers bar or something, maybe a Twix, but no. Man was just too broke and uh, it was afraid of cheating on his imaginary girlfriend. So no chocolate for him, but I love the fact that this guy is just absolutely speechless already. You could tell he is just flabbergasted, was not expecting this to be a possibility at all. I truly think this man thought that he was in the safe zone as soon as he saw the decoy and thought that they were alone but uh yeah obviously that was quite far from the truth your life is changed directly from this moment and pretty much from here on out your life's probably going downhill buddy so make sure you really let that sink in so what's your plan here? well i was gonna just see her he admits her is uh, a 14 year old girl named sandy who we met online so this guy has kind of a weird approach that I've been finding a lot of these dudes have lately where they're halfway honest. And what I mean by that is they say the age of the person. So they admit that, you know, they were talking to somebody who is obviously not an adult yet. And when you kind of look at it that way, it's like, okay, then explain the context of your conversation because clearly this is not a conversation to be had with somebody of that age. But then that's where the halfway lying thing comes in. And where I really think these guys think they're getting away scot-free with this stuff, with this stupid excuse, is they think that they can be truthful about the age, but somehow lie about what they said in the chat logs, hoping that either Chris Hansen doesn't have access to that information or that they can explain away the weird things that they were saying, which were obviously very freaky and charged in a certain direction, you know? I mean, some of these guys even send photos of themselves and they try to lie that away. It's like crazy, dude. It's like, you're okay, you're going to be real about the age, but then act like you were just here in order to be friends and hang out and have a chill hang sesh, which is obviously just not true. I, I don't get why these guys try to lie about that. If anything, you might as well fully lie and be like, oh, I thought she was 19, like the other half of these dumbasses. But no, some of them choose this route and it is truly a confusing play to me he says he's 37 and works for a major department store so you just decided today after work to jump in the car to meet a four year old girl named sandy yeah that's it <laughs> that's it the nervous laughter <laughs> oh my god i love that yeah that's it <laughs> puts hands up to his face in nervousness like bro you could already tell this dude is freaking distraught right now he just clocked off of his shift at nordstrom's and was like you know what i don't really feel like living a normal life anymore i think i'm gonna go destroy my life yeah let's do that like what an absolute dumbass you thought it was appropriate at the age of 37 to come meet a year old why explain that to me um i didn't 
Thank you, it's appropriate. <laughs> this dude can't even string together a single sentence. He is that stressed out. Uh, I didn't think it was a, a, a proper. <laughs> like, obviously not. That is an understatement, dude. Also, I can't just gloss over this. This man is freaking 37. Not to say that, any, you know, these creeps being any younger makes it any less bad, but I was not expecting him to be 37. I gotta admit, he looks great for his age. I sh really shouldn't be out here complimenting creeps like that, but I'm sure you guys agree. I'm, I'm kind of shocked at the fact that this dude's almost 40 somehow. Your chat was pretty darn explicit with her. And you acknowledge in the chat that the age thing could be a problem. Sandy, I am more than twice your age. <laughs> yes, dude. This guy is the complete freaking package. He also did my favorite move, which is where these guys send a message pretty much laying out the fact that they know deep down truly how wrong this is. How idiotic must you be? I mean, that's like literally committing tax fraud and then writing to the IRS in your thing. Look, I know uh, some of the money doesn't add up, but I'm just not good at math. Like, don't admit while you're doing the crime that you know it's a crime, dude. That's like criminal 101 over here. And now the dude's head is in his hands. He is really hurt here and I think he knows that he is truly done for which is not an amazing feeling for him but it's amazing for me to watch him feel it I will admit that I know what I did what am I gonna do now then Kaz 4541 says he's feeling ill you talk about bro had to take off his sweatshirt and everything he's literally like overheating from the stress right now and you could tell he's almost like delirious at this point i don't know if he's getting lightheaded but uh he's really not handling this well i will say he's not popping off either he's still remaining very calm but you heard him just say what am i gonna do now he's really really contemplating the full gravity of this situation which i think is something that we're kind of robbed of sometimes some of these people are hit with such shock that they truly go into defense mode but this dude instead is just kind of speed running through the thoughts of how deeply this will change every single layer and facet of his life from here on out any plans he had in the future can be thrown away any relationships that he has right now will probably be changed once his face is plastered across the country as the creep that he is i mean there's gonna be some massive fallout about this i don't know how nice his uh you know department store job is but that's definitely gone too which is the least of his worries because he's probably going to jail but it's just crazy to see these guys realize this crap in real time you can you can go if you'd like to but i, I think i need to tell you something first that's, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults. <laughs> oh my god, and Chris it decides to do the reveal to this guy while the dude is literally on his hands and knees trying to use the stool that he was just sitting on as support because he can't even hold himself up. I mean, do they have EMTs on site? I, I know they have cops, but those aren't going to do anything to help this guy physically. <laughs> I mean, if anything, they're just going to tase the dude and pepper spray him somehow for, like, being defenseless on the floor here. But yeah, I I'm seriously worried about this guy's health. I mean, I don't want to see anybody just completely wither away on this show. That would get pretty dark, but yeah. The reveal is happening, so let's watch that wrap up here as this dude takes his punishment on the ground. As the weak little creep he is. Now, if there's anything else you want to say, we'd like to hear it. If not, you can obviously walk out the door you came in. Oh my god! So, I was right. Dude is actually getting lightheaded here. He fully just passed out into this furniture. Also, that looked like a cheap little cabinet there. I've always wondered who gives them these houses to do. Like, there's no Airbnbs back in the day, so is this just somebody offering up to their house as a set? Because that's kind of crazy. I hope they paid for that damages that this dude just did. But yeah, he took that one to the freaking dome. I don't know exactly what could be wrong with him. I think this could just actually be shock. You know, some people can pass out from the craziest things, and this truly has to be the source of that. Like I said, him just running through the scenarios in his head of what is going to be changing in his life is probably enough for him to lose enough, you know, focus in his brain to where maybe he forgot to breathe or something and just passed out. We call for an EMT who comes in and examines him. It turns out to be nothing serious. Yeah, he's clammy. He's definitely... Come on, let's get up to your feet. And in the stark contrast of most of our episodes, I gotta say, this might be the most delicate uh, way that th any of these guys have been arrested. So without a doubt, this dude has a record there. Usually they're throwing him to the ground, you know, cuffs on and everything. But here, it almost looks like the cop was consoling him. Like, oh, you all right, Bubby? How's your head? <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. But yeah, they continue carrying this man out very carefully. And uh, man, this episode has been a doozy so far. Lieutenant Neville says he recovered pretty quickly. Brought him back to the police department. Had a medic at the police department that monitored his blood pressure and heart rate and pulse. Or and it sounds like the cops don't even know exactly what was wrong anyways. Like, they say he recovered quickly, but there's no actual diagnosis of what happened here. So who knows? This dude could have also completely been just a good actor and decided to take that little bump to the head there in order to help his case. That could have been fully acting. I don't know. I'm not a medical professional. So if anybody is out there that could tell me just visually what they think was going on, let me know down in the comments because I'm clueless here if this was real or not. 
pretty much was cleared to go back to the jail. Later, he goes before a judge and his bail is set. Your bail is set at $50,000 with no 10% eligibility. And this dude's sitting back here in the interrogation room with a full-on just like revive gear set. I mean, he's got the breathing thing. He's still got the cuffs on, but he's being monitored, all his vitals and everything. So yeah, he is healthy. He did stand before a judge. And thankfully, this man will face some justice for being the creep that he is. And he, along with the other creeps here, gets a bail set and everything. Man's off to jail. It's another good day of catching creeps, all right? Chris Hansen really did his thing with this one, making this guy pass out telepathically. I'm telling you, there had to be some magic element going on there with Chris because, I don't know, something's up with that guy. He's too powerful. Let me know what you thought of this one down in the comments below, though. And as always, shout out to my patrons for supporting me over there. If you made it to the end of this episode, you know what to do. Comment Grim Squad for life. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.